mechanical advantage refers to a small number of laws of physics that we use in our tools and in our work. One of those that I have loved since I was a kid is the mechanical advantage that can be gained through pulleys, ropes, lines, turning around shivs or blocks to redirect force or multiply it. So fundamental to pulleys are ropes or lines or strings. And we all know this, although we perhaps have never described it. And that is a rope only transmits tension, tensile force. You can only pull a rope. You try pushing a rope, it's not a tool. It's an annoyance. But anytime you can get a hold of a rope and exert tension, something somewhere is going to move. That's where pulleys come in. As I've been getting ready to film this video, I thought, how am I going to demonstrate this? And I thought, well, with an anvil, of course. And better than that, with two anvils. This is a little Swedish cast steel anvil, weighs 100 pounds. And we're going to lift that in a couple different ways. And we're going to follow up lifting a 420 pound hay budden beauty. If I want to lift this anvil, one way is to lift it. It's 100 pounds. You can do that. But gravity is not my friend. A pulley, a block, makes gravity my friend because now I can use my weight instead of just my strength. So 100 pounds will come right off the ground like that. Let me prove that it's a 100 pound anvil. So I'm going to hook this come along onto this scale and gradually apply the load. We have movement. We have liftoff. The scale reads 110 pounds. Now this scale is not terribly accurate, but it's certainly representative. The 110 pounds at this point includes all of the weight that's on the system. 100 pound anvil, 10 pounds of miscellaneous. When I work this come along, you'll see that the weight temporarily increases and then decreases. I think that's because of the friction in the block. I think that little two pound increase in weight right there is reflecting the line friction and the friction in that shiv. We've changed our rigging. Rigging is any combination of ropes or lines or shivs and hooks and tail holds and traveling blocks and double and triple purchases. So we're starting at square one, right? You watched me use a one-to-one -one relationship between my weight and the weight of the anvil. We now have a snatch block as a traveling block, creating a double purchase. The snatch block coupled with the hoist and the scale, the total weight of the system at rest is about 12 pounds. So when this anvil comes off the ground, we should be seeing half of the weight of the anvil as the force applied to this scale, plus the weight of the system. We have liftoff. So what is happening? Why the difference between the 112 pound load on the previous uh, rigging and the 62 pound load on this rigging? This is simultaneously hard to visualize and easy to point out. We're pulling half the amount on this rope because we have two ropes lifting the weight. Can you see that? Before there was one rope lifting, one side of the rope lifting, one side of the rope pulling. Now there is one side of the rope pulling and two parts of the rope lifting. What that means is we have tension here, tension here, and tension here. 62 pounds of tension on each part of this rope, which means there's a hundred and, let me get this right, 124 pounds pulling up right here on the anvil. Slick. Every time you put a traveling block in a system, you get the additional lift of both sides of the rope. So on this traveling block, it's an example of the advantage of a snatch block. A snatch block, snatching indicating speed, is any block that you can take apart and put into your system without having to thread the rope virtually through the eye of a needle. Now our next system is not gonna use a snatch block, but it's gonna be a block and tackle setup where each of the connections with a pulley requires threading the bitter end of the rope through the system.
I've rigged a triple purchase, or at least I think that's what it's going to be called. And instead of the two lines doing the work that's being applied to the bitter end, we have four lines doing the work on a 420 pound hay button anvil manufactured in Brooklyn, New York in 1911. Let's see what this gizmo reads when this thing gets off the ground. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a launch. 130 pounds, now that, that, that math doesn't quite compute, does it? But it's certainly representative, and I can't speak to the accuracy of the scale. But what that means is that with a triple purchase, I can lift a 400 pound anvil with very little effort. Like very little effort. You may have noticed as this system was actuating that the different ropes were traveling at different speeds. Let me work that again. In fact, I'll do that by hand and see if you can see the difference in the rate of movement. The line that is tied to the block is moving not at all. And as they get closer and closer to the actual point where the effort is applied, there's more movement in those particular lines. If you feel the need to use the mechanical advantage you can get with ropes and pulleys, or if suddenly you find yourself with a problem that you think can only be solved with ropes or cables and pulleys, step back and take a breath. If you didn't have pulleys and ropes as a kid, you need to inform yourself and be a little careful because every one of these pulleys has a different application. This block and tackle has <laughs> long been standard operating equipment for installing fences. This is a fence stretcher. This is not for life safety applications. These, this little snatch block I robbed off of a um, come along that broke, but the, the shiv was good. I mean, the pulley was good. This is off the same application. These things obviously are for what? You know, pulling a screen door shut or something light around the house or a throttle wire to the governor or the throttle on a motor or something. This is probably maritime, but this is, this is rock climbing. I mean, this is stronger than it looks. This is a life safety thing, but if you overload it, it won't be that safe after all. And this will take a lot of pressure. This you can use to pull your truck up onto a trailer or up off the edge of the road or something. But you have to give some thought to the strength of the system of the component. The weakest link in the system you're putting together has to be um, considered when you're deciding what kind of a pulley you're gonna use for what application. So be careful, be smart, inform yourself, and, and, like I said, if you didn't have them as a kid, you're not familiar with them now, get some for your kids. Get them a handful of these things and some, some uh, parachute cord and some weights to pull around and an assignment around the house, some problem to solve with pulleys, and when they get into a bind and they need to pull their truck up off the side of the road, they're gonna have a way better idea about how to do it than their friend who never did anything except play video games. Here's the rigging I use when I have to go find some way to apply mechanical advantage. These blocks range from, you know, medium-sized blocks that my dad and I used when we were logging to the great big one that used to be used at Roseburg Lumber to unload loads of logs and dump them into a pond to little snatch blocks that I use for a multitude of things because of how easy they are to take apart and put together. And, but it ranges from, you know, applications for heavy work with a, you know, a cable with really significant loads, to smaller rope blocks, like the ones I use to lift those anvils, you know, demonstrating how pulleys work, to, you know, oddball little things that must be from the maritime world, Western power, actually this was probably from lineman, off a lineman truck somewhere, rope, life safety, a homemade hook. This came off a fence stretcher someplace. These chain falls, I have no idea how a chain fall works, but I intend to educate myself and let you know if I'm capable of understanding. So anyway, the ability to use blocks and pulleys and ropes and tail holds and magnify your effort with the mechanical advantage that can be found with blocks, blocks and tackle will set you apart. It'll make you somebody, somebody who can make a real contribution to solving a real problem in a hurry. So I've used the mechanical advantage of blocks and pulleys a lot in my life as a kid, building tree houses, you know, just through the humdrum everyday experience of being a builder and a logger. I used, one time I used uh, three blocks to pull a railroad flat car across the creek for a bridge from one side, couldn't get to the other side. 
So share, would you, the stories that you have or that you've seen or that you've engineered and been responsible for about ways to use ropes and lines, blocks, pulleys, block and tackle to solve problems. Hopefully those stories have happy endings, but we're interested in your stories nonetheless. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.